Bonjour, I'm Marie Lozier, and I made the film Bim Bam Boom Las Luchas Morenas. And it's a short film that was commissioned by the CPH Talks Lab. Um, that is a story about three sisters, Lucha Libre, in Mexico City, and basically fighting for life, fighting on stage, and fighting in everyday life. So it was shown at the Forum Expanded at the Berlin Film Festival. <laughs> to the project of this movie, of Bim Bam Boom? Bim Bam Boom, it took a really long time because the, the three sisters, they're three sisters and they live, uh, the Moreno, they live in the north of Mexico City in one of the hardest neighborhood, most dangerous. And it's uh, in Lucha Libre, the gay wrestler called the Exoticos or the um, woman wrestlers, luchadoras, are the most underground mm -hmm. um, wrestlers in that field because it's a very macho city, a country, so to get to know them is very difficult. And it's through a, a wonderful exotico, Cassandro, with whom I'm going to make a feature film, that I met them. Uh, he connected to me to them when I started doing the CPH Docs Lab, which is linked to the Copenhagen Film Festival. Mm -hmm. And they put me and another filmmaker, Rania Atlip, to make a film together. Of course, the hard thing is like two filmmakers shooting the same way, mm -hmm. doing their films the same way independently. It's very hard to make a film together because we're suddenly like facing a film doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, so they put me in touch with Rania, and then when I saw her, I said, you know, there's something I really want to do, which is in Mexico, is um, film on these three sisters that my friend Cassandro is gonna connect me to. She's like, yes, yes, let's do this. So. I organized the trip and I went alone first to meet them when I went to Mexico because I go there every year um, to program a festival. And they're really far removed. Uh, they live between a highway, a bakery, a porn st a store, and there's the arena there. The arena is really broken down and they mm. live above the arena, which is no bathroom, very, very hard life. But they were extraordinary, like three incredible, strong women. And when they saw me, they didn't speak English. My Spanish is quite broken, but the energy was right there. And they're like, yeah, film us. So it was about, you know, taking time with them. And then I brought Rania. We organized a trip and someone would drive us there every day. It was taking forever because there's no names of streets, nothing, gangs everywhere. So we're left there in the middle of these three women, but I always felt okay because I felt protected by them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and Rania and I was kind of planning of making between documentary and fiction with them. And so we, we started just to know them and then we had in mind that we would um, interview them. And they first started saying, no, we love our sister, da da da. Little by little, you know that they're sisters and they always have one. They, not get along with. Mm. So we started getting stories. Mm -hmm. This one, yin, 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 this one is not good. And we're getting all these stories and by then we like started having ideas of building scenes with them. But we didn't have much time. So this film was made like in two weeks, but just barely shooting for five days maximum. Mm. So we just kind of got to know them. We drive there, record stories, and then set up some scenes. We were shooting together. I was shooting on 16 millimeter and Rania on video. We shot, it was a wonderful, very hard shoot. And then we went back to New York. The problem is that I had a million rolls of films, um, an hour and a half. And the, um, we mailed them with the x-ray thing and mm. Kodak and all. All my films were lost because the border, they open every box of film when they arrived to New York. It was all 
spoiled. Okay. So that grant of the film lab was gone by then. It was like a really small grant and we used it all. So I had no more money, no more film. And Rania said, why don't you use the video and edit? So you'll have the credit of the editor and shoot, but you know. And mm. I said, no, I can't. Because I'm not used to edit any films of someone else. And I had shot very specific things with the Bullocks and 16 that I couldn't face with someone else's images. So I decided to borrow money and go back. And I went back and I saw them for a week, but I filmed for two days and I redid everything on my own. Hmm. Kind of changed a lot of things. In a way, it was really good to return. With um, I was so desperate to have lost everything, I couldn't take that. So we shot for two days and I made my own film and returned with the film in my hands. <laughs> and I spent five hours at the border scanning one by one, hmm. not letting it be open. Yeah. <laughs> that it was, was really intense. Yeah, um, and very difficult. I didn't yeah, expect I it to be that difficult. Yeah, I had a letter from the Cineteca. Mm. I came five hours earlier. I had like x-ray bags and really kind of forced um, the border not to let me mm. x-ray them. I got it, so I just left with my rolls and they came out beautiful. Mm. And then I was able to make my film and it took a really long time to edit and the film was made for the Berlinale. Mm. So, and the, the Morenos haven't seen it yet, so I'm going in June to bring the film to them. So they don't know actually they don't the know. film? They know it's made, they know it's showing, mm -hmm. but they live, it's really hard to reach them. They don't have emails, they don't have anything. Mm. <laughs> Basically, I have to return there. Yeah. So. <laughs> Something that surprised me was that you said that it's very underground because in the movie you also showed posters of them and so I thought it was they were sort of like local heroes maybe. They were local heroes and they were really well known because they were famous in Japan. In Japan? Yeah, one of them left when they, she was 15 and trained for 15 years in Japan and they became very well known in Japan because they had a Mexican and Japanese technique of fighting mm -hmm. and with women it's they're not paid like men, and they also, it's the mother who is 90 year old who live with them, it's from generation of generation, who does the booking. But the mother is completely cuckoo by now, and so the booking is very complicated, they don't make money on it. They make money by, one is a, has a restaurant, which is two tables, and they make pig soup, which you see in the movie. Mm -hmm. One is training younger, um, Lucha Libre, and the other one just take care of the kid. Mm -hmm. So it's a really tough life and they barely ever go to, to, to fight. They're older now also, so they, their bodies doesn't follow the same way. They're still remarkable athletes, uh, but it's a very hard life mm -hmm. um, but you for women. <laughs> You were talking about the pig heads. Yeah. <laughs> that was something that really caught my attention in this movie because there were a lot of pig heads in the movie. Yeah, I mean, like, Rossi, who is the older one, took me to the meat market, which is really next to the arena. And it's insane. It, you, you come out of the car and it smells like blood. There's blood everywhere. Mm. And it's just like pigs and cows hanging dead from hooks everywhere. And she orders her head pig for the soup she makes there. So we left with all these pig heads. And I thought it was so insane that I had to make her dance with a pig head and hmm. show me how she made that soup. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's a very lovely scene in the movie, I think, how she's handling the pig Holding head. It's it like, also huge. I mean, it's very heavy, yeah. but she's so strong. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and what I also liked a lot was the scene with, with the kids, like mm. when, they, when they interact with family members, not just the three sisters, but also with the generation which comes after them. And I had the feeling that they sort of pass it on a bit, like this feeling oh, yeah. for fighting. Do they? I mean, they are the kids... That's why, I mean, the idea of fighting in, like, everyday life mm -hmm. was very important for me to bring that into... Because Lucha Libre is known, you know it's on the ring, you know they're fighting. So I wanted to introduce that as a part of life, but they're also fighting as sisters, they're fighting in everyday life. The kids are fighting, they have toys of wrestlers. Mm -hmm. Everything is about fighting fighting for life, fighting for money, mm. fighting for survival. Like while we were shooting, there was a gang who came and I didn't understand, of course, what was going on. But they stopped the shoot and said, Marie, wait here, two seconds. I was like, okay. 
And then they came back and said, what happened? And they said, well, we paid that gang because that gang is protecting another gang from um, kidnapping our kids every month. Every so month. there's like all these gangs, layers mm -hmm. of not kidnapping, paying one gang for another and all this. Everything is about fighting. So that's where I was like, whoa, okay. But since fighting is so much part of their life, did they ever consider moving away to, to have a life where they do not have to pay and no, stuff like that? It's very hard. They have no money to move away. Like mm. even the house, like many houses in Mexico, they're not built. It's like cement and they live in there, it's quite shabby, it's very hard to leave. Mm. Um, the arena is in a really bad shape. They survive by renting it for birthdays or for little fights and training young kids. Mm. But they stay there, it's kind of a, came from the mother and then the brothers and the sisters and keeps going generation from generation. Okay. Mm. The movie has already been screened at the festival, right? Yeah. How yeah. was the reaction? People were... I was surprised, I didn't know, but they were really excited mm -hmm. and really happy, something touching. But were there people who knew about them by, Nobody by chance? Nobody knew, no? no. Okay. <laughs> well, I hope that you will have more fun screenings and that more people will learn about them. And I also hope that when you go back to Mexico... That I can't wait to show it with them. Yeah, exactly, that they will be... I want them to come on stage with their big breasts. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope they will also enjoy the movie. Yeah, me too. But, well, I'm I sure hope. they will. <laughs> Thank you very much for Thank the interview you. and I wish you a good festival. Thank you.